my friends, we're five mythically immortal players with over 40,000 matches of experience and today we will analyze the huge patch that was released today. Yes, I said analyze as we will not only tell you what changes were made, but we will also explain you how these changes will affect the meter, which heroes got overbuffed and which heroes are doomed. <laughs> There are some crazy changes, so let's start with everyone's favorite solo queue role. The supports. Moonton buffed a lot of our dear support friends in the new patch, which makes them firstly more usable now and secondly equally important as a tank when we talk about roamers. First on our list we have Matilda. All of her skills received changes which can surely take her out of Moonton's dungeon. Her first skill was adjusted and now has a longer duration which gives her more offensive capability. She gains an additional 20% decay to her original 20%, which allows her to deal more damage to a single target. However, the base damage was reduced big time, so this skill can be maximized when building damage items on her. Next, her second skill now has a much longer time for her allies to use her Guiding Wind. It's now much easier to use her second skill during a battle, as it offers even her solo queue allies a better chance to escape during a teamfight. The cooldown is also reduced which allows her to use the skill more often during the game. Lastly, her ultimate got a big boy change. Or big girl change as she's… whatever. Before her ultimate forced her to go on a do or die mission. But these times are over. First she can dash away mid flight using her ult again, which allows her to reposition herself when it's too dangerous to use her ultimate all the way in. Secondly, when going offensive, she can use the dash to knock her enemies airborne. Like this she can target the enemies backline much easier. When you use your ultimate without selecting a target area, she will just aim for the current target. Third, compared to her old ultimate, instead of flying towards the target, she will fly around them which makes her flight path much smoother. Also, if you start too close to a target, you will fly away from them a bit. So the target hero can't interrupt her flying by closing in on her anymore. Generally, it is not possible to interrupt her flight anymore. Lastly, her soul mark will be transferred to the hero that was first hit by the dash of her ultimate skill. This new Matilda with more damage, better support skills and more survivability can surely make a comeback to the meta once again. The only downside is that when you're playing Matilda, she needs a great communication with her teammates. As if that is working in solo queue. To maximize her full potential, Matilda will be best used when you have teammates to play with and shout, GET AWAY FROM THERE! GO AWAY Okay, I will stop. You get a point. So when you pick Matilda in this update, either hope that the RG gods will give you allies that will listen to you, or play with a friend. Next up is the top picked and bun support in this season, Florin, who got the most unspecific patch notes in history. I mean, what the hell is that? There is a new effect where every once in a while a skill or basic attack deals extra magic damage. Um. Hello Moonton, could you maybe tell us like the trigger condition, cooldown, base damage and scaling? No? Okay, I won't even bother finding it out. So yeah, every once in a while when you have this equipped, you can deal magic damage. Wow! So yeah, her passive got many adjustments. Do's lantern don't need to be upgraded anymore, as it provides the upgraded effects directly to all her skills. The movement speed boost she gave to her allies who was equipped with Flower of Hope was removed and the base shield is lowered from 200 down to 150. There is also a new effect where Deuce Lantern attributes scale with the hero's level, the movement speed boost from her initial attribute got lowered to 4% and the max level magic power got reduced from 55 to 50 magic power. Now you can also share your equipment whenever you are 5 seconds out of combat and there is the new effect I talked about in the beginning. Her first skill was also adjusted. It is now cast in the upgraded range from the get go and the healing now benefits more from magic power. But the skill has a longer cooldown now, they lower the extra magic power bonus from her damage and they remove their 5% healing equal to the allies lost HP. Her second skill received the buff as it also has the upgraded range from the get go and you can now immediately stun the enemy for that boom boom pow stop right there criminal scum effect. 
The stun duration was lowered from 1 second to 0.7 though, which is a fair trade. And the cooldown was increased from 60 to 70 seconds on all levels. Yeah. First, a passive Flower of Hope was adjusted. The damage of her passive was increased to 70 plus 70% total magic power and 70% total physical attack. The previous 5% CD reduction was changed to 5% HP regen, which scales with the hero's level and doubles at max level to 10%. The base shield was reduced from 200 to 150. And lastly, every basic attack reduced the trigger cooldown of her passive, which means attack speed heroes can trigger this passive way more often. Her first skill was also adjusted. Now it benefits more from magic power and got a shorter cooldown in the early game. But the base HP regen was lowered, they removed the extra magic power bonus on her damage, and they also removed their 5% healing equal to the allies lost HP. So this means Florin should buy magic damage items now. Go watch our support itemization video for more details as it's even more relevant now. Her second skill also received a nerf with a shorter stun duration to 0.7 seconds. But now you can go for an immediate stun for that boom boom pow stop right there man effect. Her old skill still had a delay before the stun was applied. Her ultimate got a nerf with a reduced base HP regen, but it now has a 100% magic power bonus. They also reduced her healing reduction immunity from 3 seconds to 2, and they decreased its late game cooldown from 60 seconds on all levels to 50 seconds during the late game. Florin stays as the holy grail of the supports. These changes in magic power scaling will make her go hybrid or full magic damage, and we know damn well when supports go full magic power, they are prone to get ganked by heroes like Saber Natalia, Hayabusa Fanny and more. Florin needs to stick with an ally most of the game, especially damage heroes as she is supposed to boost the damage of her allies. Next we have the OG support, Rafaela. Her ultimate received a wider skill indicator which makes it easier to cast and hit enemies, and the speed between each holy light was also increased to stun the enemies faster. The stun duration was lowered by 0.3 seconds though. But now it benefits more from magic items with a 35% magic power scaling. The ally with the lowest HP also received an HP regen of 150 to 250 plus 45 magic power. Third, she now gains an extra 1% movement speed for every 20 magic power. Her second skill which is her main source of healing was adjusted as well. First the base HB regen was reduced to 125 on max level, but now it benefits more from magic items with a 50% magic power scaling. The ally with the lowest HP also received an HB regen of 150 to 250 plus 50%. Secondly this skill now removes slow effects and gives slow immunity for 1.5 seconds, which can counter items such as ice cream wand and thunderbelt, and skills that provide slows to the enemies. Looking at you Valir. Thirdly, she now gains an extra 1% of movement speed for every 10 magic power. With this, more magic items means more movement speed, which means faster and better rotation for Rafaela. The base speed bonus was reduced by 20% to 30% though. With the changes on her skills, she can now offer her allies more chances to escape against high mobility allies or sloth makers, while also allowing her team to execute much better engages. Especially walking heroes benefit from it as their weakness are slows and the lack of mobility. So a good Layla x Raphaela combo would be sick from <laughs> scary AF. Next is the walking hospital Estes. His first skill received some changes where the base healing stat is reduced, but now it benefits more from magic power. You also apply now hybrid defense instead of extra attack. His ultimate also has lower base HP regen, but higher magic power scaling. Overall this means that Estes will benefit much more from high magic power items, such as cock of destiny, fleeting time, holy crystal and blood wing. Estes with higher magic power scaling means less defense for a very very squishy hero like him. This forces him to stay in the backline most of the time to maximize his support for his team. Also the general downside that Estes has is still not fixed as he can't work with the 4 junglers of doom. Lancelot, Ling, Fanny and Hayabusa. He works well with tanky junglers who aren't really in the meta anymore, and he also cannot initiate as much compared to Florin, Rafaela and Angela. Because once he get target locked, 
say goodbye to your walking hospital. But when you use them probably, when you got good teammates and they pick the right heroes, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, no one dies today with Estes. Sunny side up or scrambled? Diggy. His ultimate received an adjustment where the base shield stat is reduced in the late game, but his magic power scaling was increased by 100%. Do you start to see a pattern here? Yes, Moonton wants that all supports build magic power items. So don't get angry when your ally goes full magic power on Diggy. Because now, more magic power means more shield. And more shield means more chances for this small egg boy to save your butt. A stronger and bigger shield makes him even better against hard CCs from meta heroes such as Terisla, Lapu Lapu, Atlas, Ikadita, and Franco. A walking birdie with a purify skill can surely become a big big headache to enemies abusing hard CCs. Make way for the chicken wings, <coughs> I mean the chicken boy Diggy. Lastly, we have the kill steal expert Angela. Magic power scaling was buffed both on the first and old, base regen and shield lowered, you know the game already. Overall, it's a buff as you're attached to one of your allies anyway. So building defense items was never the way to go with her anyways. Now let's move on to our mages. First, our Ying Yang Queen got a buff. Her first skill got a higher base damage with a higher magic power scaling, which means her damage is increased in the late game. Her passive also got a buff where she received a 50% max speed up, which allows her to escape faster during ganks and teamfights. I think this small buff will help her a lot because previously, the damage she dealt always felt a bit underwhelming in the current meter. I had it often that enemies could escape with a few HP left, which is not happening anymore. Next up we have our little mermaid princess, or should I say Bungus, because she banks us. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> she uh, banks. Okay, never mind. Kadita had such a good time in this season, and that's why the nerf hammer is coming away. Her first skill's base damage is reduced by 50, which is not much of a big deal, right? Her ultimate also got a base damage reduction, but only 30 for the first burst and 20 on the return wave damage. They also removed the effect where multiple wave hits means less damage, which makes me think. Is that even a nerf? Your early game will be a bit weaker yet, but you can still one-shot squishies anyway. And in the late game, your damage potential is even higher with your returning waves being stronger. Next up, we have the hero Moonton messed up for her new skin, Lilia. Her second skill got a Valia revamp. Well, almost. When you're hitting an enemy hero, she now gets a 50% reduction on her recharge time when her gloom is on the max level. So after you let him explode 5 times, you can spam around the skill like there is no tomorrow. Well, almost. This is honestly a very significant buff and makes her much stronger than before. Can you still get a new skin by the way? I'm not even sure. If yes, you should get it, but re-download Mobile Legend with Aptide first to get a huge free diamond bonus for your money. The full text and video tutorial is in the pinned comments. Cyclops received some minor buff. His, his first skill cooldown is now reduced to 8.5 seconds at all levels, and his second skill got a movement speed buff from 30% to 50, which decays now over 2 seconds. These small changes can make him more effective both as a mid laner and as a jungler, as it allows him to escape dangerous situations and engage faster when he can. He's not an ST hero now of course, but never underestimate this little fucker. Next we visit the nerf corner aka Moonton's list of most hated children. Valentina received a nerf on her first skill. Both her base damage and magic scaling was reduced, which makes her a bit weaker of course, but isn't a major nerf of course. Now a moment of silence for one of the most nerfed mages in the game. Eat. This time her first skill got nerfed as the Santa will no longer deal extra damage to minions. This now only works against enemy heroes which sucks for her during the wave clear. Regardless, Eve still remains as a top tier mage in high elo ranks and competitive C. Next we have our beloved tanks. First on our list is none other than the highlight of this patch, Lolita. She just received her long awaited revamp that gives her new and interesting mechanics. The most notable change is on her second skill. Instead of just absorbing all the damage, it now has a health bar on its own, but the catch is that projectiles are not turning into nothing anymore. It will be deflected instead and will hit the enemies in front. Even CC effects are reflected like stunts or knockbacks. Though to balance this, 
Item effects such as DHS and Corrosion Scythe cannot be inherited from the deflection of the shield. Honestly, I don't think their shield HP bar matters too much, since your enemies will be too afraid to shoot at it anyway, because they will be the ones who receive the damage or the stuns. Her ult will also no longer be immediately cancelled when she gets stunned, and instead she will still stun the enemy for a short duration when it's cancelled. This goes as well if you tap on your ult and release it quickly. Though if your Lolita receives CC right after casting her ult, it won't be cancelled at all. And the last notable change for Lolita is her passive. Instead of giving your teammates a low amount of shield after a few seconds of not getting hit, it got changed into only giving a very little shield, but it continuously giving out shields to your allies. Even in combat, it still gives your ally some shield, though I'm not quite sure how useful this will be since it does take a while to reach the max shield you can give, and even then it can only shield you from one hit of a skill. But overall, I think Lolita will be much more fun to play after this revamp, and she will be a very scary tank to face. She was already very good before her revamp, so I am really excited about how well she will perform in this update. Especially because you can make your enemies damage themselves. Trolling enemies will be very very fun with her. Next up we have our Uber driver. There's just a slight change on how teammates can ride him. Instead of having me ride on top of Johnson when he's activating his ult, it now works similar to Matilda's dash. Now his teammates must press this bubble thing to get into Johnson. This is much better since Johnson can literally be an Uber or an ambulance. He can just drive to his teammates to pick them up now. He can also carry multiple allies per ride, for example dropping one at the base and picking up another one right there. This also means nobody needs to recall to the base anymore or rotate to Johnson. Honestly this is a very nice buff and it removes many of his restrictions. And it gives him so many more use cases. Next is our Kung Fu Panda. Akai received a tiny buff on his passive. He got 1% more scaling on the extra shield and 1% more basic attack damage bonus. He also have more slow on his second skill now, from 30% up to 45%. The CD also got decreased by 1 second in the later stages of the game. I don't think this will help our Kung Fu Panda rise into the meta like he used to be, but it's definitely a welcome buff for those who love to play with him anyways. Next we have our Dino Slow. Since Barats has been down in the Moonton dungeon for quite some time, Moonton decided to lower the mana cost on both his first and second skill. This helps him to be better on the XP lane instead of forcing him into the jungle. But it is sadly not enough to release him from the dungeon. I still think the changes we suggest in our Fix the Moonton video will be much better, so maybe I should translate this video into Chinese? Is there anyone out there who can translate English to Chinese? Next we have our Rolling Stone. Bashir isn't much used except to counter regen heroes, so they tweak the numbers on his first skill a bit. They increase the standard duration from 1 second to 1.5, but also increase the cooldown slightly. I would say this is a good trait, considering the extra 0.5 stun is a quite long time. In a pickoff strat he can be much more effective now, but he will still mostly act as a counter for regen heroes, who all got extreme buffs, so yeah, he will definitely be used much more. Next up we have our move. Not much has changed for the raging cow. They only made his second skill be able to scale with magic damage because of the new item Flask of the Oasis, which we will cover in detail later. This helps Minotaur to improve his support capabilities, but won't improve his overall performance too much. Next we have one of the most useless heroes in existence. He's the biggest fail in history as a counter hero who can't even really counter his enemies. He had a bigger fall off than Braxy when he got exposed. Emotion. Luckily Moonton recognized this and decided to give him a decent looking buff. His first skill has a much faster recharge time in the late game and they also reduce his mana cost in the early game. This will allow Fovius to spam his first skill a lot more in the later game stages. The base damage and magic power scaling was also increased a bit. His second skill has received a cooldown buff in the late game, so now he's able to spam his second skill much more often in the late game, which also lets him trigger his ult a bit more. Though the really big buff here is on his ultimate. The cooldown got reduced by 6 to 4 seconds, which obviously means he can use it way more often. You can really see that they want Fovius to be more effective in the late game, where he is supposed to be an excellent counter against all those dashing rats. These changes will make him better and also somewhat usable at least, 
but I still have concerns due to the fact that it's still going to be very hard to hit your ult on certain heroes. Next up on our list we have our Lady 2.0 and she just got a powerful buff on her first skill. Her slash base damage was just increased by 25 in the laning phase and in the late game it got increased to 200. She also now have a 100% physical attack bonus making her scale like crazy. Her laning phase will now be better as she can cut the way faster and she can essentially one shot almost any squishy if she is decently fed by the mid game. The cooldown was also decreased for the late game. I believe this was maybe even a little over buff and we will see Benedetta back in the meta again. All you Benedetta one tricks can give your enemy <laughs> chronic depression again. How nice. Next we have the BBC. The big black creature. Huh? You saw. I know what you were thinking you dirty mind f so this BBC has gotten a fat and I mean a fat buff. The Shah eruption extra damage based on the targets lost HP was increased by 0.5% to 2.5% oh god this sentence didn't roll off the tongue which might not look like a big difference but that passive wrecks up quickly as he can suck the life out of his opponents extremely violently. Hey yo what the his first skill also received a big fat buff. His edges deal now 25% more damage, which gives our BBC that big black air force energy. I am very uncomfortable with the energy that we've created in the studio today. Lastly, the cooldown of his second skill got reduced in the early game, but slightly increased in the late game. Yuzong is already a very strong hero and this would only make him better. Moonzone really wants to push him back into the meta, so I guess a new Yuzong skin confirmed? Next we have our fallen boy Julian who also got a little buff. His passive cooldown is reduced by 1 second in the early and 0.5 seconds in the late game. No game changer, so let's move on to our punchy boy. He's just way too mobile, as he can be anywhere on the map at any time with his clearing speed and fast rotations. Moonton has recognized this and decided to give him a nerf on his mobility and cooldowns. The cooldown on his first skill is now 7 seconds on all levels and his second skill cooldown is increased by 1 second in the late game. This will make his late game harder and rotation a bit slower, but it's not a devastating nerf that will ruin him. Still a nerf is a nerf, so he is slightly weaker now. Next up we have our dear assassin. And we start with our Titan Hunter lady, Fanny. Fanny has been dominating the high ranks for so long, and she's currently the most banned hero in Mythical Glory and above. That's why Moonton is nothing her first skill base damage by 20 to 30 points. Nothing too major, but still a slight nerf. Next, we have one of our Edge Lords. Moonton decided to revert the nerf they applied on Eamon's ult, where they made it smaller than you. They increased the range of his ult from 3.5 to 4. Before the nerf the range was at 5 so it's not a completely 180 Moonton made here. And as you can see in the clip playing right now it's not much of a difference. But it is still an improvement for our edgy boy. Next let's talk about our dear marksman. And start with my beloved main 1-1. One -one. After 1969 nerfs, nice, she finally received a freaking buff. The thing is, they overbuffed her again. Why? I talked about her in detail in my Fix the Moonton video and Moonton did exactly what I say they shouldn't do. They gave her back some of the dashing speed. So let's just look at the comparison from the previous patch. Do you have any more questions? This will make her so much stronger again as the mobility nerf was exactly the nerf she needed to be balanced. They even made her basic attack do more damage by 10% and attack effects from items also benefit from this damage increase. To balance that they increased the interval between basic attacks while standing still and they also increased the cooldown of her second skill by 6 to 8 seconds. But these nerfs can cover the buff on her mobility. I honestly don't understand why Moonton is reverting the one thing that made her balance. I played a lot with her recently and I'm on the 50 match win streak in rank just by spamming her. And by the way, yes, in solo queue. Well, maybe I should stop complaining that they buffed my main. Time to make new content on my 1 1 Nico channel again. Yay! Next up is Ixia. <laughs> Honestly, I can't remember a hero being that unpopular after the release for such a long time. So Moonton tries to make her more usable now. They are buffing her ult again to hopefully improve her gameplay. 
Her ult is now much longer and narrower. She can now activate her passive beam effect simultaneously with her normal basic attacks. And to balance that, they reduce the ult duration from 5 to 4 seconds, increase the cooldown a bit, and they also remove the extra attack speed you gain when you use your ult. Which I think is just a fair trade for how bad her ult is now. Moonton really want people to use her more, and it seems like she could be very popular with this buff. At least in higher ranks due to her zoning potential when taking objectives. Still, I can't really see her becoming an overall popular hero yet. Next up is our Moggy Boy. Moonton doesn't like him shining so much, so they nerfed him. They increased the base damage of his ultimate, but they removed the extra 300% damage to minions. And here comes the big catch. They lowered the attack effects you inherited from DHS, for example, from 66% down to 50%. This is a huge blow to his damage as the combo of DHS and Golden Stuff makes him so strong. And now you're basically missing 24% of the damage you had before. Next up is the huge buff on Popol and his Daugi. They made his Daugi deal more damage against creeps, which means he is much better as a jungler now. They also lowered the CD on his first and second skill. Moonton wants to make another marksman a jungler rather than a gold laner. Which I don't really understand because it's not like we have thousands of options on the gold lane. I'm really interested to see where this one is going. Next up we have Cancer. <laughs> they toned down a bit the damage on a machine gun, while they increased it on the shotgun. It's not that much, but it's nice that they are paying attention that her shotgun is practically useless. Next we have the deserved buff on Melissa. The most recent nerf on her was just a little bit too much, which unfortunately led to her downfall. No, not unfortunately, it was a pain in the A to deal with her. So Munto decided to reward some of the nerfs they gave to her. And when they say some, they mean one. They increased the attack speed she gains from her first skill in the early stages. From 35% up to 50%. This will make her a bit better in the early game, but it's not a huge game changer. Next we have Leslie who got an extremely big nerf. Her initial crit damage is nerfed from 140% down to 135. Ahem, <clears throat> yeah, this will definitely make a balance, Moondoll. Good job. Yo, Nico from the editing booth. Yeah, I just noticed they actually turned it down to 130%, so... Yeah, still not really a big nerf. Lastly, our bowling boy also gets a nerf. They reduced the base damage from his first skill by 25 to 50 points. The damage difference won't be too noticeable, honestly. And it won't be enough to stop his bolt from juggling into your face. He's still a ban-worthy hero in your typical rank games. Next, we have the item and battlefields adjustment. First, Ice Cream 1 has received a big nerf and it has become the core item for many heroes. Now the slow effect cannot be triggered right away, as there is a 1 second cooldown before another stack gets applied. This is the indirect nerf for heroes like Valir, Eve or Chang'e. They also increase the amount of stacks you can receive from 2 to 3, while they lower the slow you gain per stack from 15% down to 10. So you need at least 2 seconds to trigger the full effect, instead of applying an instant 30% slow on your enemies. This is a pretty big indirect nerf for many heroes. Next up we have Demon Shoes. It now gives a plus 10 mana regen instead of plus 6, and they also remove the effect where hero kills and assists restore mana by 10%. Instead, minion kills and assists restore mana by 4% now. This is a pretty nice buff for mana depending heroes who are going to a lane. Warrior Boots received an okay adjustment, but honestly it's just, yeah, it's somewhat of a nerf. They adjusted it so Warrior Boots will no longer proc off of basic attacks, but all physical damage. But the defense's properties are reduced from 25 down to 20. I think it will be still only used if there is no reason to use tough boots. Fleeting time was also adjusted. Now it gives plus 300 max mana instead of mana, which allows support to prioritize fleeting time. Next is the new item for season 30. Flask of the Oasis, or Foretold, like Elgin called it. It gives the base stat of 60 magic power, 300 max HP, 10% cooldown reduction, and an additional 12% healing effect. The passive does the following. After casting a healing or shield skill on an ally, and the target's HP falls below 35% within the next 3 seconds, the ally receives a shield for 5 seconds with 660 to 1500 points. 
This at the same time triggers a second effect, where it can reduce all of your skill cooldowns by 2 seconds. All of your teammates will have their own cooldown of 40 seconds. You can even get the shield for yourself but only from skills that can theoretically heal others. So Estes can trigger the shield on his own while someone like Bane can't. This is good though because otherwise there would be a few heroes who could abuse the hell out of this item. Overall it's a pretty nice item for supports especially those who can spam around their shields and heal. Supports are really going to be strong in the next season. Next even our dear potions got some buffs. The magic potion now gives a CD reduction of 10% instead of 5. So magic users can benefit from this additional 10% cooldown reduction during the late game. But take note, the CD reduction have a ceiling of 40% which only enchanted talisman can break with a max CD of 45%. The power potion buff is fairly decent as its life steal is upgraded from 5 to 10%, which is honestly very good for sustain fighters. The rock No, oh, not this one, although hi, the rock is back! <laughs> so the rock potion buff is a huge one, as the control duration reduction went up from 15% to 30. So you can get out of those CCs way more quickly, which is amazing for fighters, junglers, and roamers. This allows them to be able to counter engage or to counter sets a lot faster. With the rise of the support meta, the support emblem was obviously nerfed. Lol, what? The healing effect got a nerf from 50% down to 12. But don't worry, when you pair this with a new item, Flask of the Oasis, you can get a total of 24% healing effect. That's still a win for our healers in the game. The second tier talent, Life Drain, was removed and got replaced by an old talent, Wilderness Blessing. This now gives a movement speed boost in the jungle area and the river. This talent is going to be great for roamers and junglers to move faster around on the map. Lastly, we have the battlefield changes. The changes on the XP for all heroes has been slightly reverted for level 3 and 4, meaning you need less HP to reach those levels. But it got slightly increased for reaching level 5 and 6, so the overall XP you need to level up from level 3 to 6 was unchanged. Does this mean you'll be able to do mage and XB lane shares? I am honestly not sure yet, but hopefully it is, as we want the tanks to be on level 4 during the first turtle fight already. Hopefully the devs had this in their mind. For the jungler they increased the XP gained from buff creeps by 1-2% to and amazingly they have adjusted the metal system. Now the heroes who are supporting their killing machines and getting kills have a much higher chance receiving a nice medal. Tank and supports can finally be the regular MVP that they always have been anyways. Now after this great ending you should definitely check out this video where we explain how to correctly build support heroes. Also a huge shout out to the MLG family members especially the mythical glory members like Fanny Bootcamp and Nightseeker. See you